the whole straight was over six kilometers long and they were able to hit speeds over 400 kilometers an hour which is just completely bonkers in my opinion hey you guys it's richard here again um, as you know we've got the Le Mans 24 hours coming up and that is in my opinion the biggest race in the world and my favorite race it's a race I've followed since I was a kid and I've been fortunate enough to do it multiple times and I took a win and pole position there in 2015 so very fond memories of this place just to give you guys a bit of an insight I'm going to take you on board with one of my laps from uh, last year and show you what the track's all about so the first thing I've got to say about Le Mans which people probably won't understand is you have multi-class racing so you have four races within the race and the races uh, the classes are defined by prototypes and GTs so I'm in a prototype which is a purpose-built car for Le Mans and a GT car is based on the road car for the for various manufacturers so Ferrari have the 488 Chevrolet have the Corvette Porsche have the RSRs etc etc so you're gonna see me on track overtaking multiple cars who look at different speeds because they're in different categories so come and see what it's all about okay coming on to the the start finish straight to start a lap uh, as you can see I've got a Chevrolet uh, C8 Corvette in front of me and I'm going to try and overtake him in the first corner which is a long right uphill with heavy braking into a second gear left right chicane um, you clip the curb on the left and the right and try and run out as much as you can without going over track limits we now come down into the S's de la Forret you have a big bump here where we go over the surface change and then on this left here and the right you can see there's a very very strong camber and banking it's very important to get as far to the inside of these as you can to use the banking because as you can see on the exit of this right all of a sudden it goes off camber and if you're too wide you get pushed into the wall on the left now Tete Rouge very important corner to get the exit to set you up for the two kilometer long Una Dier straight going past the Ferrari 488 there getting into the slipstream of uh, a, a, another LMP2 car and as you can see with the massive speeds that we get here the slipstream is actually really effective uh, we're going to be hitting about 330 340 kilometers an hour before braking for the first of the chicanes now as we come up to the chicane braking at about 100 meters you see that the track used to go straight on there. Now, up until 1990, there used to be no chicanes on this back straight, and the, the whole straight was over six kilometers long, and they were able to hit speeds over 400 kilometers an hour, which is just completely bonkers in my opinion, but I would have loved to have had a go if I'm honest. So first of these chicanes, carrying as much speed as you can, down to second for the second apex. Very, very good traction. And now this section, as you probably noticed, we're on public road ever since we came out of the uh, of Tete Rouge. Now the road is actually very well looked after and has pretty decent grip. But the thing which is quite tricky with it is, like any public road, there are certain wearing points. So it's a lot bumpier and there's a crown in the road as well. So that's why we try and stay on one side of the road rather than be in the middle of it, as you can see, because the you can see here as I've stopped it there's a very slight increase so if you're in the middle the car with the downforce you have at the massive speeds you're getting here again going over 300 kilometers an hour to the second chicane the car bottoms out and it can be very very unnerving so coming to the second chicane again very very hard braking down to about 100 miles an hour for the entry then down to about 60 miles an hour for the second apex then we're coming out we've got two Porsches in front and now I'm thinking how am I going to be able to overtake them and this is the art of Le Mans you have to constantly predict when and how you're going to overtake the traffic you approach now these two were quite friendly they stayed close so I was able to squeeze down the inside thank you very much it's not very often that that happens now we come to Multan corner which is an extremely hard corner because you cross from public road onto a purpose-built section and as you go over the the crown of the road as I mentioned before it can unsettle the car so you can see here as we go the steering will move just a little bit it doesn't look like a lot but it's actually a huge amount down to first gear, Moltsan corner, and very hard on the throttle afterwards for the run down to Indianapolis. This is my favorite section of the track. It's a two lane road, it's very narrow, you've got the trees on either side, and you really feel the extreme speeds that you're going at. Now, Le Mans is probably the fastest track that sports cars race on, and we go over 300 kilometers five times in the lap, and this is another one of those places. Setting yourself up for the daunting Indianapolis corner, a banked corner, it's very, very fast on the entry, and when your car's good and the track 
tracks rubbered in, it will be just a lift, and then you have to get the car slowed down to second gear as quickly as possible for the left-hander. And as you can see, we've got old school gravel traps here, so if you make one mistake, then you can end up in the gravel, and that can immediately finish your 24 hours. And now we come up to the slipperiest corner on the track, Arnage, first gear corner, which is at a junction on the public road. And because of all the buses and trucks and cars and everything that stop at this junction, a lot of fluid goes down over the year when the circuit's not used. So the braking zone is incredibly slippery here. It feels like you're in the wet. Now we're onto another long straight coming up to the Porsche curves. Now I'm trying to calculate with this Aston Martin in front whether I can get him before to try and not compromise my lap. And again, it's a high speed chess game when you're coming up to these cars, trying to predict how you can pass them. I managed to get the Aston on the entry to the daunting Porsche curves. We go back onto permanent racetrack now, and these are the most fun corners on the track. Fifth gear going up to 160 miles an hour in the middle, down to four for this long right where the car always understeers. And as the track gets grippier and grippier, as it rubbers in you just gain more and more grip and now we come back to what I like to call civilization we've been through the forest we've been through the campsites and we're coming back to the pit garages the main grandstands fun fair on the left for the four chicanes clip the curb in the first one and before slowing it down as you much as you can for the second one clipping both curbs and that's a lap of Le Mans uh, in my opinion, my favourite circuit in the world, not just because of the memories, but a very, very special place. Obviously, circuits now are becoming safer and safer, and it's nice to have a circuit where we've still got some of the old school challenges that drivers love. I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure to check out the results. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And, you know, give me your comments on Le Mans. Of course, I'm always happy to answer any questions. Put some questions in the comments, and I'll see if I can answer them for you. Enjoy, guys.